All right, fam, welcome home. It's Cap as we in the theater. Before we even hop into this video, like, share, subscribe, tune in to Rock Wilder Kelly. He just dropped his San Andreas stream, which made me realize I had to do this shit, and I completely forgot. Um, I got this one, and I got a Vice City one, man. So um, make sure our motherfuckers tune in. Um, I downloaded San Andreas, like, July or August of 2020. Um, recently I played it, wasn't even thinking about reacting to the shit, you know what I'm saying? I was just looking at videos and I was playing it and shit. Like, last week, it was like a couple days before my membership ended. And, um, you know, I was just playing it just to play it and something told me, like, yo, just look it up on YouTube and shit. So I was watching the video. I think it wasn't this video, but it was another video. And it was talking about how he betrayed CJ and shit. So, you know, this, this time I found the countdown video. You know what I'm saying? So, um, this is top five hidden early signs that Big Smoke was going to betray CJ. We're just going to go ahead and hop into it, man. Um, this is going to be, you know, something special. Make sure motherfuckers go tune in Rottweiler right Kelly. He just dropped a San Andreas stream, so make sure. Other San Andreas videos. Okay. But I wanted to make this video in which I would highlight pretty much most of the major um, hidden signs that Big Smoke was going to betray CJ. Now, if you are playing San Andreas the very first time, like when I played this game the very first time, I had no idea that Big Smoke was going to betray CJ. However, though, if you replay the game of a second course, time, this is what like, makes the San Andreas story so awesome. I there was like actually nine when, it, when this came that out. Big Smoke is actually going to betray <coughs> Or when really I first cool. played it, I was so like in this nine, video, ten. I'll be talking about the top five hidden <coughs> signs that Big Smoke was going to betray CJ early on. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. So starting off here, the very first sign that Big Smoke was going to betray you was actually in the very first mission. Right. In the mission, Carl goes to his mother's funeral. He meets up with Sweet to get into an argument. Kendall walks away. And then what happens is the Balas come by in the drive-by and they shoot at the gang. They hit Big Smoke's car, which blows up. The gang then gets on bicycles and tries to get away. When they're getting away on the bicycles, the Balas car will not target will not, I repeat, target Ryder or Big Smoke. They will not shoot or chase Ryder or Big Smoke. However, when you get to the intersection, you will see they're clearly going after Sweet. They're trying to kill right. Sweet. Sweet yeah, does yeah. escape from them. And then Carl and Ry Carl falls Ryder and Big Smoke. And when he gets past the freeway area right here and he starts going down the main street towards Grove Street, the Ballas car reappears. Right. At this point, even if Carl is ahead of Big Smoke and Ryder by a lot, the Ballas car will pass both Big Smoke and Ryder and will actually chase CJ and shoot at him. Now, some people might argue all oh, this just because the AI was just programmed to target CJ specifically. However, That's there's other are... missions in the game where you have allies like Sweet, for instance, especially at the end of the game, and Sweet will actually get shot by the Ballas and will right. actually die. So the Ballas will actually target allies of yours in other missions. They specifically do not target Big Smoke and Ryder in this mission, and there's right. a reason for that. This shit makes Next me want to play four, it. We have I not shooting right at now. the Ballas in drive through and changing the subject. Now, this is that infamous mission where Big Smoke makes that huge order. Pretty much every San Andreas right. man knows this mission. Greedy the mission starts out with Carl going to Sweet's house, and he sees Sweet, Big Smoke, and Ryder exiting the house. Big Smoke and Sweet are actually in the middle of an argument, in which Big Smoke actually says that respect has to be earned, just like money. Sweet then says, what are you saying? You don't respect me, to which Big Smoke actually immediately changes the conversation. He changes the subject, talking about food, making a joke out of it. Big Smoke, in this aspect, I think he was questioning Sweet's leadership. But I think that when Sweet stepped up and got in his face, I think that he immediately changed the subject. Right, look turned at to a bitch. And what you riding, respect has to be earned, Sweet, just like money. So what you saying? You don't respect me? What I'm saying is, speak up, nigga. I'm hungry. God, <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, man, cool cannot on. live on bread alone. I know. I tried that shit. Carl, you look a little thin, man. You gotta be hungry, man. Yeah, man, I what you eat. fools trying to eat? That's right. some tacos. Tacos again? Hell no. Chicken, man. No discussion. Man, I don't want no chicken. But there's even more hints that Big Smoke will betray Grove Street in this mission. When CJ is driving the gang to Cluckenbell, CJ will actually ask Sweet what happened with his mother's death. To right. which actually Ryder will actually say that some people saw a green saber driving away. This is correct. The green, green saber, saber is the vehicle that the killers used in the murder. However, though, we know that Ryder betrays Grove Street later on. Now, it's unknown why Ryder brings up the green saber. He would have known about it 
it's either because the developers did not intend for him to be a traitor and then made him a traitor later on, right, or right. something else. But regardless, Ryder does bring up the Green Saber, to which Big Smoke will actually try avoiding the subject as much as possible. He'll try diverting the conversation elsewhere. And then when CJ actually finally pulls up to the drive through when everybody's ordering their food, CJ is still talking about it. And then Big Smoke completely tries to change the conversation into food. Take a listen to this and watch what Big Smoke says exactly. We got to talk about it. We all got to talk about it. They was going for sweet. How are you supposed to know that? You know what people are like. Say they have love for you, but won't say a word. Shut up. They escape. Some people say they saw a green yeah, saber on the on my shirt. Then speeding away. Yeah, but people like to talk, don't they? Anyway, that's half a sad coach you're talking about. He's literally a hell. You right. My bad. Hey, bro. They sprayed the house. I ain't see shit. Watch it, bitch. Hey, sorry, bro. You know I gotta know about mine. I know, CJ, I know. I'm just trying not to think about it, bro. I mean, I didn't know she was hit until it was all over. Yeah, right, 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 right. Let's eat. Crazy, bro. That's fucked up. However, the biggest hint at Big Smoke's betrayal in this mission is right when CJ spots the Ballas car. The gang chases after the Ballas and opens fire on them. The Ballas are shooting at them, and CJ, Ryder, and Sweet are shooting at the Ballas, but Big Smoke is not. He is not shooting at the Ballas. He's saying that he's eating food. He's hungry. Now, this is why Rockstar are geniuses when they wrote the story, because this all comes together. This proves Big Smoke's betrayal. When somebody's playing this the first time, they won't think that Big Smoke is a traitor. They'll just think, oh, that's part of his character. He just right, likes yeah, eating yeah. food. That's why he's not fighting That's what we was programmed later to on, think. That's what we thought back then. We ain't even doing nothing. Like... Damn, that was some serious shit. Yeah, man, those ball of fools won't try that again. Now let's get back to the grill. Alright, I'm on. Oh man, that food fills a hole. You chubby motherfucker. Next time you better start blast or I'm gonna blast you myself. Smoke you wide, man. I mean wide. <laughs> and that's why you love me, baby. Crazy. At number three, we have moving out of Grove Street Imagine into Bala's territory. Now, in the exact trader. same Imagine mission, drive, a CJ finds out that Big Smoke has moved out of Grove Street, so he decides to drop Big Smoke off at his car, house. Bro, and no, see. Big Smoke is not just some random Grove Street member. He is second in command. He is the underboss of Grove Street. Some if people Sweet forget was to that. die, he would take over Grove Street. So think about it this way. Why would the second in command of Grove Street move into not just some different neighborhood, but Idlewood, which Idlewood is Bala's territory. He moved into Bala's territory. He bought a brand new house in Bala's territory. And when CJ asks him about it, he just makes some generic excuse saying that my, my aunt died and she gave me the money. It just doesn't make much sense. Right. Somebody playing this the first time, this is something that somebody might catch on to because this just seems really suspicious. Hey, GTA oh, is tell smart, me why you man. Rockstar smart. Man, got some money from my aunt. I mean, it's a nice place and all, but the Grove is in my heart, baby. It's where my dogs is at. Yeah, okay, homie. The reason that he moved into Idlewood is simple, because he wants to be closer to his new business partners. He wants to be closer to Tenpenny, who constantly frequents the area. Tenpenny, if he was seen around Grove Street going into Big Smoke's house constantly, everybody would talk about that. But him being in Idlewood, not a lot of people are going to talk about that, and the Ballas sure aren't, because the Ballas are his new allies. Moving on to number two, we have Crash repeatedly at Big Smoke's house. Now, in the few missions that CJ does for Big Smoke, we can see Crash exiting, exiting his house in the exactly. opening cutscene. And by Crash, I mean the corrupt police force led by Frank Tenpenny and second-in-command Eddie Pulaski. So Look. the first time that CJ sees them is in Running Dog. And then in the second uh, time that okay. CJ actually sees them is he'll see them in Wrong Side of the Tracks. I completely Let's forgot. Let's watch those two cutscenes really quick right now. I forgot about that shit. Boom. Asshole. I remember the beat. Yo, Carl, see you around. <laughs> what the fuck they doing over here anyway? Those nosy motherfuckers won't leave me alone. Think I'm Mr. Big or something. But I don't tell them shit. For me, it's all about my homeboy, Carl. 
Yeah, whatever you say. The game is real important, CJ. You know that. You down to represent, baby? Yeah. Look, my cousin is coming in town from Mexico. I got to go scoop her up. All right, then. Come on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, Carl. Keeping busy, I hope. You know me, Officer Ten Penny. Yeah, I know you, Carl. I know everything about you. Don't touch me. Bro, you a bitch ass That's nigga. right, Carl. I, I used to hate I them, got man. my eye on I still you. Do. And I, I got my eye. Book. We're watching you, Carl. Motherfucker. Come in. What was that Go all chop. about, baby? You man. tell me. Oh, hell, man. You want to sleep? They got nose and everything. We can't shit without Ten Penny taking the interest. The hell with him. Yeah, I guess. What's really up? Hey, thinking of taking a little ride. Three deep mention a little something that might put us deeper in the game. All right, I'm down. So CJ witnesses Ten Penny and Pulaski being at Big Smoke's house several times, and CJ doesn't think much of this because he's being blackmailed by Ten Penny himself because Ten Penny killed Officer Pendleberry and he used and is using that to threaten CJ to get him basically to do whatever he wants. Right, However, though, right. what is noticeable here is that what Big Smoke guys, says exactly about them being at his house. Now, Big Smoke says. They what was that all about, baby? You tell me. Oh, hell, man. They got their nose and everything. You can't shit without Ten Penny taking the interest. The hell with him. Yeah, I guess. What's really up? Hey, thinking of taking a little ride. Three deep mention a little something that might put us deeper in the game. All right, I'm down. Notice how Big Smoke just constantly changes the conversation, right. saying, oh, we got to go take care of this. Over. He immediately right. stops talking about it, doesn't want to talk about it immediately change the subject. Right. But then at the end of Wrong Side of the Tracks, there's this dialogue in which Carl drops Big Smoke off at his house and Big Smoke says, Carl, you better head home. I don't want Crash to pull you into something. And Carl says, okay, I'll leave, thinking that Big Smoke's being friendly to him. But in reality, the reason that Big Smoke is saying this is because he doesn't want CJ to catch him and Tenpenny conspiring in the act. Right, okay. Okay. Better clear out, CJ. I don't want those crash fools trying to pull you into some shit. All right, homie. You be careful with those cats. I'll we'll right. see you later. Before I reveal the number one early hint that I think Big Smoke was going to betray CJ, I wanted to make a few special mentions. And special mention number one is being way too friendly. Now, there's nothing wrong with being friendly, but Big Smoke is just way too friendly to CJ. He almost never argues with CJ or insults CJ in any way. CJ right. left Los Santos five years ago, just abruptly left without telling his friends or family. Pretty much abandoned him. Everybody was pissed off at him early on in the game, except, except Big Smoke. Big Smoke was totally fine with that. And in my personal experience, working in retail for so many years, I know we can't really compare, you know, retail CJ to a video Mike. game storyline. But the point that I'm making is that when I interacted with customers, and those customers were just then way too back. friendly. They were more friendly than normal. Just way too friendly. They were almost always trying to pull some kind of scam. They were trying to trick you into something. So when somebody like Big Smoke is just way too nice, just keep that in mind. That's also a red flag there. Another special mention that I have here is his name. Think about it. What is his name? Big Smoke. How does that imply that he's a traitor? Not his full name, but his initials. And I can't believe I didn't realize this until so many years later, but when you look at Big Smoke's name on the map for his missions, what are the initials? BS. I think everybody knows what BS stands for. Additionally, we have special mention number yeah, three, no, which is that none uh, of his missions are Grove Street iffy. related. If you think about it, all of his missions have nothing to do with Grove Street. Some people might say, well, OG Loke does. OG Loke is more of a sweet mission because right. Sweet is at Big Smoke's house, so you go to pick up OG Loke from jail, and OG Loke ends up betraying CJ anyways. Okay, think about it right. this way. Running Dog, what is that mission? CJ drives Big Smoke to another part of town in which Big Smoke tries to buy weed from the Vagos. Another mission in a wrong side of the track, CJ drives Big Smoke to the train station in which he has CJ chase down and kill a bunch of Vagos gang members that were meeting with the San Fierro Rifa, a right. gang from San Fierro. How does Big Smoke know about that? And then his last business, mission, just business, in his last mission, Big Smoke is doing some major deal with the Russian Mafia, and it just goes all crazy. And even CJ says, Big Smoke, there's something that you're not telling me. So none of his missions have anything to do with... You know what I'm saying? But, um... Um... I don't even know if I finished that Vice City one. 
Maybe I'll re I'll just redo it because I don't think I finished that shit. I think I I think I might have filmed like maybe like two two to five minutes. Maybe I don't know. I'll figure it out. But um, yeah, man, we're gonna cut this video short, man. Make sure I like, share, subscribe. I'm out this bitch. It's Cap as me in the theater. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,